The M1 MacBook Air doesn't have a fan and I have a few questions about how it handles music production. So today, that's what I'm gonna answer. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Harmoon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to find out if the MacBook Air throttles while using Logic Pro and see if we can get this thing to struggle. So here we've got the MacBook Air base model and I've got the Logic Pro and Activity Monitor so we can obviously have a look and see how the CPU and the RAM is handling. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different settings here. So if we go into preferences and audio, what I've done is, is I've set the buffer size to 32. So this will be good for recording. So for a lot of people who do live recordings of guitars or vocals, you want the lowest buffer size because that introduces the lowest latency. Now I've put processing threads as automatic, but we will try higher performance as well. And we'll also increase the buffer size just to see how much of a difference it makes. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna start off at 55 tracks with a 32 sample rate. Managed to play 55 tracks, no problems whatsoever. That's really impressive. Now let's try 60 tracks and see if we can get that playing. Okay, so managed to play that absolutely fine. Let's up that to 65 and see if we can play that. But what I'll do is I'll just show you the activity monitor. So at the recommended settings, as you can see, we're not really touching that CPU much and the RAM, yeah, no problems whatsoever. So we're absolutely fine with that. Let's play and have a look. So it couldn't finish 65 as you can see, so it says system overloaded. Now let's go back to 60 tracks and just see if there's any thermal throttling. So it managed to do 60 tracks before. Let's just see if we've hit the CPU hard enough where it's starting to limit. Note, so that played it absolutely fine. So what I'm gonna do is, is we're gonna stick with the recommended settings and let's up it to 128, let's click apply. And let's try 65 tracks again and see if puffer size has any bearing on playback. Okay, so it couldn't do 65 tracks. So that's really interesting. So that's at the recommended settings. I'm also just gonna have a look at the activity monitor. So we're still not maxing out the CPU, which is where my next setting is gonna come in. So that's really, really interesting. But what we'll do is, is we'll up it to 512. Let's just give that a go. Let's just see, I mean, that would be almost at the max I'd want it. Let's see if it can play 65 tracks or not with that kind of sample rate or buffer size. Nope, so it couldn't play it. So it just stopped at around sort of uh, 19 seconds and then sort of gave up. So it looks like the max is at 60. Now what I'm gonna do is, is because we've been hitting the CPU, I'm gonna go back because I want to because this has no fan, I really want to try and push this thing. So we're going to drop the percentage, uh, the sample rate down to 32. Let's go back to 60 and let's press, press play. Okay, so that managed to handle it fine. So in terms of the activity monitor, again, we're not really seeing a lot. Maximum sort of 40%. Yeah, CPU usage, so now let's unlock this thing. So let's just try and get the most amount of performance out of it and let's see if it starts to, starts to thermal throttle. It's the same buffer size at 32 and we're gonna try, we're gonna try 90 tracks. Okay, so we're trying 90 tracks at the moment just to see if it's going to work. Okay, and that worked. Let's have a look at the CPU usage and bang, look at that. We've increased that by quite a bit, about 80 to 90% usage. And in terms of RAM, yeah, we're not using much RAM at all. So let's minimize that. Let's try 95 tracks and see if we can get that to work. Okay, so it couldn't do 95 tracks. So that's really interesting. So let's have a look at the CPU usage. So yeah, it's sort of, 
yeah, just dropped off a little bit over there. So it really couldn't handle 95 tracks. So I think we're starting to see it thermal throttling. Now I'm gonna quickly go back to 90 tracks and see if it can play that back again because before it played 90 tracks, now will we see it play it again or not? Okay, so it managed to play it back again, so that's fine. And if we have a look at the CPU usage, again, it's increased ever so slightly as it was going through. It was increasing. Let's play that back again and see if we can really hit that CPU hard to try and get it to fail. Okay, and that looks like it still worked. Let's let's have a look at the CPU usage. So again, we're really maxing out that CPU. So unlocking it definitely helps. And yeah, we're not having any issues. Now what I'm gonna try and do is set 100 tracks and we're gonna try and get what the magic 100 and we're gonna up the buffer size to 256. Let's see if we can get 100 tracks on here. Okay, so it couldn't do 100 tracks, unfortunately, on 256. Let's try and do 512. No, so couldn't even do it on that. So let's go back to, I think it was stable at around 90. And let's see, let's see if we can play that back again at the 32. Okay, and that played it back. So let's have a look at CPU usage. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. What's interesting is the fact that even though we've got no fan in here, it doesn't really affect performance too much. I have seen it drop. I've done these tests quite a few times and I have seen the performance drop a little bit. So I got, you know, th sort of three to four less tracks when it's really, really hot and I've been pushing that system hard. But eight gigabytes to me didn't, it didn't really be the factor that was holding this system back. And yeah, managed to play 90 tracks, no problem. And just remember, it managed to do 90 tracks with the uh, eight threads for performance, uh, high performance cores at a buff rate of 32. And I didn't really see much of an improvement when it comes to track playback on the buffer size. So uh, that was quite interesting for me to, to see as well. I have been testing Logic Pro on the M1 MacBook Air and the performance is just fantastic for a Mac under a thousand. It smashes even the old Intel models and it does this all while being completely silent, which is exactly what you want for music production. It really surprised me. And if you are a music student or someone who wants to get into music production and are thinking about making music, then I think that the base MacBook Air would be a great choice. The only thing I'll say is that if you are a more experienced user and you have a lot of plugins for Logic Pro, then I would first head to the developer website for those plugins right now, as only a handful of Logic Pro plugins work with the new M1 chip. I have tried connecting my audio recorder and I haven't seen any issues, but again, check with the manufacturer. It's a very quick email, but the MacBook Air is a great machine to start with. And unless if you plan on using more than 90 tracks or even 50 to 60 tracks with some plugins, then I would say that this is a great MacBook to start with. I will be testing out the MacBook Pro. So be sure to hit that subscribe and like button to check that out. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you thought and check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But if you wanna see more from me right now, you know what to do. Click on one of these two videos. There's gotta be one of them that you enjoy the most. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.